So I'm going to be moving to the explicit dynamics module right here. Right. So first of all, let me choose the material that we need to use. So go to the engineering data, then engineering data sources. And you'll find the explicit materials library over here. Double click on it. And I guess we'll choose steel 1006 for the explicit material. We'll just add that to the library and then we'll close this. So I'll open geometry. So this opens by default space claim. So I'm just going to import the model that we have. I'm just going to drag and drop it. And we have the model over here. So this is the model. This is going to be the tool that we use to play in the material. This is the workpiece. And so I guess it looks good. So we'll close workbench, I mean space claim for now. And I'm going to open up the mechanical module. So the mechanical module has been opened up and the model has been successfully imported onto the module. So first of all, I'm just going to like, okay, the first step we usually follow is renaming it for easier access, right? So I'm going to rename this as a workpiece. And this can be the cutting tool itself. So first of all, I, I want to assign the material that we selected earlier to the workpiece that is steel 1006. And for the cutting tool, since we really don't want to analyze the cutting tool, I'm going to set it as a the stiffness behavior as rigid. The next step I'm going to follow is uh, we have a default contact that has been defined by ANSYS itself. So let me check it out what it is. Oh, so it's been set to bonded. We don't actually need bonded, right? So we're going to delete that contact. The body interaction has been set to frictionless, so that is what we want for this case. So I'm just going to leave that there. The next thing I want to do is uh, check out the mesh. Okay. So I'm going to insert a mesh control method over here just for the tool. And we're going to set it to tetrahedrons. So as you can see, it's a complex geometry, right? So that is why we go for a tetrahedron method. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to like introduce you slowly to a new type of, I guess it's not new, but just a different approach to meshing the workpiece then. See the workpiece is not a complex shape, right? It's a perfect rectangle. So I'm just going to set, uh, I'm just going to give the solver a number of divisions to follow to mesh the model. So I'm going to select all the edges over here just these four edges over here, the shortest edges, right? So I've selected the four edges and click on apply. Then I'm going to define it by the number of divisions. So I'm just going to give it the number of divisions as 10. Okay. So I'll go ahead and mesh the model. See that? Uh, there are 10 divisions made on this workpiece. So the since the model is a perfect rectangle, the solver has used hexahedral elements to mesh the model. So we're going to move on to defining the analysis settings. So explicit dynamics, initial conditions, we don't need to apply anything for here. So I'm just going to go to the analysis settings. So the end time is what we want to focus over here. So I'm going to choose an end time of uh, 7.5 e raised to minus 4. I know it's pretty short. As I mentioned earlier, it's a short duration event, right? So the end time that we give has to be very short. So the end time here is uh, we're basically instructing the solver to solve it for this particular amount of time only. Okay. So it has to be pretty small for an explicit dynamic event. And if it's not right, you can encounter solving issues. So 7.5 e raised to minus 4 is a safe value for this model that I've determined from experimenting with the module. So this option right here is resume from cycle. It's currently set to zero. So what explicit dynamics allows you to do is you can resume from a previous cycle. For example, when I run this cycle for one time, right, for 7.5 e raised to minus 4, 
I can have the option of uh, resuming it from this cycle and then uh, extending it for a bit more time. So that is the resume from cycle option. So since we haven't run any previous uh, analysis, uh, we, it's currently set to zero. So the maximum number of cycles is the maximum number of energy cycles that the solver will run for. And the maximum energy error is point, set to 0.1 as default, right? So as I said, right, before there can be an imbalance. So if the imbalance increases and uh, the energy error will happen. So if the energy error goes up beyond the 0.1 that we've defined over here, the solver will stop, okay? Because uh, when I experimented with the values, I did find that um, while varying the time step, I encountered energy errors. And when it went above 0 0.1, the solver just stopped. It was showing a steep curve and the solver just stopped so that the error doesn't multiply. So the re reference energy cycle is also set to zero since we don't have any other previous cycles to refer from. The initial time step, the minimum time step and the maximum time step are set to program control. Since we don't know the correct time steps for these it has to be really small so that's why we can't uh, play with it that much 